Julie, this just makes it even more difficult than perhaps it already was for Speaker Mike Johnson, right? Well, clearly the honeymoon is well over here. Speaker Johnson now under immense pressure from the Freedom Caucus and the White House in no rush to bail him out. He wanted to meet with them last week. They said, no, we had a bill regarding border security. You voted it down. So now he has to figure out who he can work with, try to keep all these different factions very happy. In other words, he's learning what Kevin McCarthy learned. And it's interesting to see how he's going to be able to balance all this and come out of this. Well, that's for sure. My goodness, the clock is ticking here, Julie, as we've discussed. They'll have three legislative days to figure this out when they get back. And this option is going to be a non-starter for a lot of folks. The idea here with a year-long continuing resolution is that it actually adds up to cuts. And so this comes down to an argument, I presume, between the Freedom Caucus and the Hawks, who are not going to swallow a Pentagon spending cut in this year of all years. Exactly. This is going to come down to what it always comes down to. They're going to have to figure this out within the same party or they're going to have to rely on the Democrats. There will be a lot of pressure on the speaker not to do this. There's also a lot of pressure on the speaker to make sure that the government doesn't shut down for obvious reasons, but also for an election year. So he has to get a lot done in a very, very short period of time with a lot of people that want a lot of different things. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, two parties who want different things, but are probably both trying to avoid the same outcome, which is getting blamed potentially for uh, a government shutdown. And this is something that Monmouth University Polling Institute Director Patrick Murray discussed earlier today on Bloomberg. Take a listen. It's, it's both parties should worry about it. The Republicans, maybe a little bit more because, you know, we've seen this game play out a little bit. But it seems like the Democrats aren't without worry as well, because you have one of them, Josh Gottheimer, the congressman, Democratic congressman from New Jersey, now floating, potentially tweaking the rules so that it is no longer just one individual member that could bring a motion to vacate against the speaker. What does it say if the Democrats are stepping in to save a Republican, Julie? Well, I think at this point, the Democrats also realize a shutdown is no good, and they have had some type of working relationship with this speaker, if you remember earlier on. However, they have to figure this all out in a very short period of time because it is an election year. But again, I think everybody remembers the chaos that ensued when they were trying to find a speaker. So in this case, Josh Gottheimer might be saying, OK, we don't all want to go through that again. However, Democrats have something they can rely on as well. With all of this going on, they can be the ones that say, hey, we were ready to pass a border deal. Republicans, you've been talking about the border deal for some time now, but we were ready to get one passed. So they have a lot working in their favor in that respect. But at the end of the day, nobody wants to see a government shutdown. The blame will be everywhere. Yep, the countdown clocks are coming. Julie Fine, thanks for joining us as we now add the voice of Bloomberg's Jordan Fabian. I find this fascinating, Jordan. As a White House reporter, you can give us your view here uh, from the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue. A Republican lawmaker from New Jersey by the name Chris Smith is calling on President Biden to do an address to the nation here, an Oval Office address, to make the case for what we're talking about here when it comes to funding for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, his supplemental budget request, never mind keeping the government open. Is that something that we might see in the next week? I doubt we'll see that in the next week, Joe. And uh, the congressman only has to look back to October when the president did give an Oval Office address about this very package. Hmm. And there's a lot of frustration in the White House because... They see a package that they gave a lot of ground on on immigration and to meet the Republican demands. And then Republicans at the last minute said, we don't want a deal. So uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of hand wringing or, or jumping through hoops on the part of Joe Biden to try to convince these Republicans who have frankly not been clear on on what they would accept as far as a deal on Ukraine and border funding. And of course, Jordan, the president is also focused on other policy areas, including student loan forgiveness, another $1.2 billion, I believe, in loans forgiven today. And this is actually something he was speaking about just moments ago. The economy is growing. It's growing. Jobs, income across the board. We have the most advanced economy of any major nation in the world. We have a lot more to do. But with the help of all of you college graduates and 
who've gone paid off your student loans now, I'm confident we're going to get it all done. And of course, the president speaking from California, where he's been on a big fundraising swing after we saw pretty good fundraising numbers in the month of January. Forty two million dollars were brought in. They are sitting on about one hundred and thirty million dollars now. But what's all the money worth if you can't get your economic messaging to resonate, which at this point we've seen him really struggling to do still. Exactly. And student loans is a big area for young voters in particular, voters of color. These are parts of the Biden coalition from 2020 that have gone out to pasture, and he needs to bring them back into the fold to have a chance of winning again, which is why you see him focusing on issue like that uh, in Los Angeles. Look, this is one of those events that the White House likes to tack onto the schedule uh, <laughs> on a fundraising trip so that the, you know, the campaign doesn't really have to pay for it. But that being said, there are some side benefits here, which we're talking about, so you can get those voters to really pay attention to what he's been doing. We learned with last evening's fundraising deadline that Joe Biden uh, outraised Donald Trump by a long shot. We also know Donald Trump spent more than he brought in largely because of attorney's fees. He did a, a town hall on Fox News last evening where host Laura Ingram asked the former president about the legal fees. Here's what he said. Do you have a bond to put up? Even if, if you appeal, you've got to put up escrow money. That's uh, uh, it's a lot it of dough. It is a, lot a of dough. form of Navalny. It is a form of uh, communism or fascism. A form of Navalny, this following the former president's statement about the death of the Russian opposition leader, Jordan, in which he never even mentioned Vladimir Putin. Is this fodder for Joe Biden on the trail? Absolutely. It's making the case, the contrast case, that this Biden White House and campaign wants to make, which is you know, Joe Biden is standing on the side of Ukraine fighting for freedom and against Vladimir Putin. And then you on the other side have an opponent who has a long track record of praising Vladimir Putin and is likening his legal troubles to uh, a dissident who was uh, killed in, in a Russian prison in the Arctic. So yeah. uh, you know, sort of John, Donald Trump making the argument for, for Joe Biden there uh, in, in a sense.